Well, hello there. I'd like to welcome you back to Red Go Garage. Now, it's been a few months since I've put out any videos or anything. Life's been busy. And um, if you happen to notice, I moved. So now I'm in a bigger garage and um, it's been just taking up a lot of time. So anyways, let's get to it though. So now that I moved a little and gotten settled a little bit, I've gotten back on the old tea bucket here. And uh, what I decided to tackle was paint. Now, I've never painted a car in my life. Um, the, the, the extent of my painting knowledge was, uh, you know, using spray paint cans or whatever, right, to, to touch things up. So I figured, why not try it on the old tea bucket, right? So uh, I did some research on this and that. I bought some stuff. So I went to Harbor Freight, I bought a paint gun and I bought a really important thing, a respirator. Um, but let me show you here what I'm actually using for paint. So these are, uh, you can get, the, I bought some of these at AutoZone, I bought some of these at Summit, so they're around, um, but they're Duplicolor Paint Shop Finish System. Um, and I have no affiliation with these guys, but so basically what it is, is it's ready to use. Like you just dump it in the gun and go. There's no sort of mixing or adding reducer or thinners or I don't know, whatever, you know, hardeners, nothing. You just dump it in and go, which I'm sure you pay a premium for that. But considering I don't know shit about any of this stuff, I figured that'd be good. So um, let me show you a little bit here what I got going on. So first thing I did was I obviously took all the fiberglass body pieces off the car. I covered everything up in Visqueen. Then what I started with, and it's hard to tell because the gel coat is white, so it doesn't look like I've done anything, but what I did was I um, sanded the entire gel coat. So with about 220, they said between 180 to 220 grit. Um, so the entire thing has just been sanded just to kind of like, it just roughs it up just a little bit. The other thing too is just from working on it and leaning over and this and that, there was like light scratches everywhere, you know, from and from this passing one set of hands to another. So that kind of cleaned all that up, like, you know, where I scratched the firewall a bit, you know, doing things, whatever, cleaned it all up. So you don't have to go crazy on it. I just took like an orbital sander and just went over the entire thing, got, and then did a bunch by hand and everything. Then I used that um, their primer, this this paint shop primer. Again, it's just ready to go. Um, and I shot it with my Harbor Freight gun, my Harbor Freight everything, even my Harbor Freight air compressor over there that's ancient. So I just sprayed it. Um, those little quart cans ended up. Uh, I used basically two quart cans and I did two full layers of primer on this. So just to kind of give you a rough idea how much coverage. So if you were doing something like a truck like that, you're obviously going to need a lot of cans. Um, at that point, it might be more um, uh, more financially, make more financial sense to, to go to a paint shop or something. But for this, it'll work. So I basically bought two cans of primer, two cans of paint. And then they actually have clear, which is in here. Um, so I have two cans of everything. So once I primed everything, I then went and I um, wet sanded this. So um, again, I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm just going off of what I can find on online. But um, I wet sanded it all with 600 grit. So they said if you do too, too fine a grit, there's not enough, um, like, grit left for the paint to adhere so if you did like 2000 they're saying it'll be so slick the paint's just gonna slick slide off which i don't know if i necessarily believe that but whatever so i did 600 on top of the primer just to like kind of smooth everything out a little bit i wet sanded it once i did that then i went back over this with um wet sponges and and like it's hard to tell but there's like little like you can kind of see it like dust which I'm gonna wipe this down one more time with like a tack cloth before I paint it. So that's where I'm at today. I'm getting ready to paint this thing. I'm gonna just do like one final wipe down with this thing. 
um, spraying it in my garage, obviously not in a paint booth. So, uh, you know, the results are only as good to be as good as, you know, your prep work, right? So, uh, but I'm not super worried about it. This is kind of my budget tea bucket build. So um, it should turn out great. I'm, I'm excited to finally see some color on this thing. Um, the color I chose, which I didn't mention that earlier, and I apologize, my garage is a mess because I'm still getting unloaded, is dark emerald green metallic. Um, so I'm hoping it's kind of just like it says, you know, like a dark green with a nice metallic to it. I think that it's going to look good with like a lot of the black, a little bit of chrome, and then I'm going to do like a brown interior in it. So I think it'll look really good. Um, but like I said, what I'm going to do right now is give this one final wipe down um, with, with some tack cloth and then we're going to spray it. So um, I will set up the camera so you can kind of watch me spray. Um, I, again, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I just kind of, when I'm spraying, basically what I'm trying to do is just like, I'm going to do kind of somewhat of a light first coat just to kind of get some of the areas, the jam, you know, everything kind of get a little bit of color on there. It says to wait five to 10 minutes between coats. Um, it's pretty warm. So actually today is a little cooler than it has been in Texas. It's been 105 degrees or so. And today is only supposed to be like a frigid 95 degrees. So today, like right now in the garage, it's 80 some odd degrees. So point is, is it's warm. So the, the, it should dry up pretty darn quick, right? So um, I've made sure yesterday to do the sponge, the wipe down, everything. So that way it just had all night to sit here and completely dry out and be really good, ready to go. So um, I'm going to do, you know, one coat. And then what I try to do is kind of get a hit it with the light. So that way when I'm spraying it, I kind of see it getting starting to get wet. And then I stop, you know, I don't spray that area anymore. So that way it don't, won't, won't run on me, hopefully. Um, again, just to, I just try to just do a couple light coats instead of like heavy coats. Um, but it's hard to do because you get going and rhythm and everything. The other thing they say is to, to, to shoot it like a robot, right? Just like as even as possible with the paint gun, just back and forth, back and forth, you know, nice and smooth. So, um, you know, I, I don't know. Like I said, we're going we're gonna to we're gonna give her a shot here. So, um, yeah, let me wipe it down and uh, get the camera set up and we will, uh, we'll get to paint. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to hit that like and subscribe.
So, uh, I'll paint on my screen here. Uh, we're officially painted. And uh, as you can see, um, it's a little dark. So that color was a little darker than in my mind I was hoping for. Not saying it's an ugly color or that it's not gonna look good. Just in my mind, I was thinking more of like a forest green, I guess, I don't know, a little bit lighter. But you can see that I did three, basically two and a half, three, three coats. So it took about a quart and a half to do. So the first two, first one was kind of just spraying it all, getting it on there a decent amount, um, not laying it real heavy. And then the second coat, I was really kind of laying it on a little bit heavier and uh, trying to get, um, you know, any spots that I missed the first time around or that were a little light, which I kind of intentionally did. The third time you see me, I'm holding the gun away a lot, a lot farther. And the instructions say for metallic paints to hold the gun about 12 to 14 inches away and kind of missed it. And I guess that's supposed to help kind of like really get the metallic to do its thing. I don't know, but that's what I did. So let me show you here. So here's the door. Um, I said, you can see it's green. It's definitely green. Also my garage is not that bright right now. So that's part of it, but it's definitely a dark green and it says dark emerald metallic. So I'd say the, the description is accurate on the paint. It's just in my mind, I was hoping for maybe something between like a candy more like a candy apple green but a little bit darker in my mind so this is just way darker than i was thinking but i'm happy with it so um at first i when i first started spraying i was kind of spraying down here where you're really never going to see the body so that way it kind of things looked weird and i was like man did i get black like what's going on and i kind of started spraying up here and you could start the green coming out and then i was happy so um yeah, so now I'm going to let this sit for about 20, 30 minutes. I'm going to get a drink of water and then I'm going to clear it. And the clear, I mean, you know, it says pretty much you don't really need to wait too much. Right now it's 86 degrees in my garage, so it is not cold. So the paint's drying nice and fast. That's why I really didn't even wait in between coats. I just kind of went from one end to the other, then started over because by then it had been five, 10 minutes. So um, I'm going to let my let that dry a little bit plus I have a really old Harbor Freight compressor that does not air up that quick so it runs a lot so this puppy's hot it's been running pretty much non-stop so I'm gonna let it cool down for a few minutes because I don't want it to overheat while I'm in the middle of trying to do clear or anything so um, but overall super excited for it so the plan is to clear it and then I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna set all this stuff out in the sun for a couple days out there in the driveway. Um, it's Texas, and it's supposed to get it back up to like 105 in a day or two, so it's gonna be hotter than shit. So I'll let it really bake in the sun before I ever go to. Um, and then that way too, when I go to wet sand it and and buff it and everything, it's all out out there where it can get dirty. So um, check back in here with you in a few minutes. Uh, make sure to hit that like and subscribe while I uh, take a break.
she is all cleared now. Um, I turned the camera off because I didn't figure you didn't really want to watch me clearing over and over. Um, I think I did about four times, and that's what its instruction said, three to four times. Um, you know, kind of laid it on thick, too, to where you really kind of start to see that clear. Um, it seems very, like, kind of orange peely, but I guess when you color sand and buff, all that comes out. I, I don't really know. I'm not, no, like I said, I've never really painted before, so. But it's shiny now, so that's cool. Makes me happy. Um, I'm going to let this dry for the next couple hours. Actually, I'm probably not even going to touch it till tomorrow. It's about noon today, 1130. So I'm probably just going to let it sit here and air dry. And then tomorrow, I'll put it outside and let it just bake in the sun. But I don't even want to touch it right now. Just because the paint, you know, only shot an hour ago. Clear, obviously, minutes ago. Um, so I'm just going to let it sit and kind of dry overnight and everything probably here in a couple hours i'll turn on that big industrial fan just to kind of move some air but there's a breeze today anyways so it's there's some air moving around but um yeah basically next step would be to color sand it so i have 2000 grit so i'll get water on there i'll you know do 2000 grit over the whole thing then i will buff or uh, buff and wax it and everything and then then finally get to start putting the thing back together so that's cool i'm excited excited to kind of get it back together and get it on there and start seeing some progress on this thing so i appreciate you guys uh patience with me as this has taken a long time i did i don't think i made a video of it but i did start making all the panels for in here i used quarter inch ply you can see like the little corner piece there that i was making like a filler piece uh, so I kind of have all the panels. I obviously got to finish my transmission hump. So I'm going to um, get some sheet metal and finish that up. I should have taped all this off, but, you know, got excited and ahead of myself. Whatever. It's all going to get covered up anyway. So, um, but finish the transmission hump. Then I can do all the interior. And now that it's painted, I can actually start wiring things. So I have a headlight switch that I need to put in, a tr an ignition switch. I have all the gauges. Um already i already kind of pre-installed those so somewhat right because obviously all the holes are there already so dakota digital gauges so um i'm hoping once it's in the sunlight too once it's cut and buff you get a little bit more metallic out of it you should be able to but you can kind of see it a little bit now but um all right well thanks for watching guys um i'm probably not going to film cutting and buffing and all that because i don't really feel like it and not that terribly exciting but like i said some water 2000 grit gotta go over the whole thing kind of scuff it all up all down and then um i got a buffering wheel do some buffing compound and all that on there maybe i will make a video of just that but for anyways for this video i'm done thanks for watching guys i appreciate it like and subscribe i really appreciate that too if you have any questions drop them in the comments below um i do get comments you know even months later and i am pretty adamant about uh, answering any sort of questions that come in. Again, if it's a paint question though, I, I don't really know a whole lot about paint. I'm just kind of winging it here and seeing how it goes. So I'll do my best to answer. So thanks for watching. See you guys later.